Debbie McWilliams might not be the first big behind-the-scenes name that springs to people's minds when thinking of the Bond films, but after having worked on the series as a casting director since 1981's For Your Eyes Only, along with producers Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson, she is one of the key people for when it comes to casting a new James Bond. Her tenure as casting director has included the castings of Timothy Dalton, Pierce Brosnan, and Daniel Craig, so when McWilliams gives an interview to the Radio Times talking about the future of the Bond series and what she thinks about the future casting of the role, it's reason enough to pay attention especially when the gist of what she's saying seems to be indicating that the next Bond will be an unknown 30-something. Say, I'm a 30-something, but how do I tell if I'm unknown enough? I'm sorry, I don't know who you are. Oh, that's great news! Time to crack the bow tie out of storage! Good evening, Mr. Bond fans. 2023 continues to be a slow news year for our favourite British secret agent. So if you're like me, even a crumb of potential news can feel like an excuse to... Hold the presses. This just in. And indeed, a crumb is what we got when, as part of their Bond at 70 series, Radiotimes.com interviewed Debbie McWilliams, and the casting director seemed to rule out the likelihood of the next Bond being younger than his predecessors. Sorry, James Bond Jr., your moment to shine will come eventually. In the interview, McWilliams talks about how during the casting of Casino Royale, the initial impulse was to seek out a younger Bond than usual. We did look at a lot of younger actors, and I just don't think they had the gravitas. They didn't have the experience, they didn't have the mental capacity to take it on, because it's not just the part they're taking on, it's a massive responsibility. So we kind of scrubbed that idea and went back to the drawing board and started again. This tallies with what we've known for a while now, particularly when you relate it back to the casting for Casino Royale. I think most people know that there was a 22-year-old Henry Cavill up for the part, and according to director Martin Campbell, the casting decision for that film really did come down to Cavill or Craig. This is interesting, I think, because obviously the next Bond is going to be the hardest of reboots, given how No Time to Die ended, and and I, and many others I know, have speculated that casting a younger Bond than usual in the part may well be one of the clearer ways for them to signpost to a general audience that this is indeed a new era for the character. McWilliams' comments certainly seem to suggest that so long as she and the producers are at the helm, though, that won't be the case. Indeed, her comments echo sentiments expressed by Michael G. Wilson from last year when he spoke with Deadline. We've tried looking at younger people in the past, but trying to visualise it doesn't work. Remember, Bond's already a veteran. He's had some experience. He's a person who has been through the wars, so to speak. He's probably been in the SAS or something. He isn't some kid out of high school that you can bring in and start off. That's why it works for a 30-something. Back to the McWilliams interview, she also talks about how the next Bond actor will likely not be a big screen household name. Timothy Dalton was known, but he was known as a Shakespearean actor, really. Pierce was known, but that was basically from television. Roger Moore was known from television. Sean Connery wasn't known. Nobody had ever heard of him. A certain audience had heard of Daniel Craig, but more the kind of independent cinema audience. He hadn't done any hugely commercial film at all, really. Layer Cake, I suppose, was the most popular, should we say, of the things he had done prior to Bond, but he wasn't a hugely well-known actor. I think that says a lot, and I think it rules out a lot of the high-profile names that are often associated with the next James Bond moniker. I'm thinking Henry Cavill and Idris Elba, for instance. Given how successfully things went with Craig, it wouldn't surprise me if they tried to replicate that success, <laughs> and so the next Bond may well be doing small-budget indie fare right now, rather than big-budget films and TV shows. In a lot of ways, this is no news, really. I think that this probably tallies with a lot of Bond fans' assumptions about how the casting process is going to go, but I think it's significant that she's kind of putting a line through the possibility of, you know, big names taking on the part in the future. An obvious counter to this, though, is that, well, yes, I mean, just because Eon went by these methods in the past doesn't mean that they're not going to shake it up for the future, which is true, but I think that so long as McWilliams, Broccoli, and Wilson are in charge, I mean, they have this recipe for success, and they've had it for some time, and so long as those three people are involved personally, I have a hard time imagining them straying from that formula anytime soon. Well, uh, now seems like a good time to remind everyone that I am currently 33, nobody knows who I am, and I've been studying the Bond films for so long that I've mastered the Roger Moore art of beginning every sentence with the word well, so, uh, boxes ticked, am I right? I'm joking, of course, I don't think that the world is quite ready for a slightly camp Yorkshire Bond just yet. Though I guess I have time on my side to get into shape to be considered, because McWilliams also made mention that, uh, well, corroborating Barbara Broccoli's comments of late, the search for Craig's replacement is yet to get underway. There's no conversation being had at the moment. Barbara Broccoli has been heavily involved in other projects. You know, it's not unusual for there to be quite a gap between different Bonds. It has known to have been a... Five-year gap. So no, nothing. 
Most of the rumors make her die laughing, she says. I have a theory, which I've trotted out many times, is that when there's a gap in a newspaper, they fill it with a James Bond story because they haven't got anything else to write about. Why can't people just wait and see? I don't know. And as if to uh, prove that theory correct. What the hell is going on? In other Bond casting non-news recently, I just wanted to touch on the Daisy May Cooper stuff because I saw a few comments on my videos about it and I just want to make it clear that I think that this is pure twaddle, right? I mean, Cooper's mum even gave an interview to the Daily Mail where she said that her daughter had heard nothing about this until the article started springing up. Speaking about her daughter's fame and links with James Bond, Gillian says, Daisy's everywhere at the moment. I'll scramble through my phone and her picture will come up. She was with me this morning and we saw the story in the news about her playing M in the new Bond movies and she thought it was hilarious. It really is one of those articles that you see and you're just like, what? Where, where the hell did that come from? I don't know if news outlets are just so bored of coming up with clickbait articles about James Bond himself that they've decided to go for the supporting players of Bond, but uh, you know, I look forward to many more months and potentially years of completely off-the-wall casting choices if this is the precedent that they're setting. Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Q, CGI Peter Cushing as Moneypenny, and Flipper the Dolphin as Tanner. Daisy May Cooper is mainly known for starring in, co-writing, and creating the comedy series This Country. She's on UK TV a fair amount these days on panel shows and such, and I have to admit, I've not seen This Country, I've not seen The Witch Finder, I haven't seen much of the work that she is most well known for, but I have friends who are fans of her, and they tell me that she's a very talented comedic actor. I mean, she is BAFTA winning, and she's a comedy writer, of course, but especially at 36 years old, she'd be a massive change of pace from Rafe Fiennes and Judi Dench. I don't think there's even a smidgen of truth to this at all, and I think that a big drive behind the articles is obviously to generate outrage online, because for so many of them you have the headline and then you have the pictures. They've all been using very similar pictures of Daisy May Cooper. She's been in this sort of leathery, almost dominatrix uh, outfit on the red carpet for the Brit Awards. And that's a deliberate choice, because it's a provocative enough image that it's it's going to generate a lot of, you know, people are going to be retweeting the articles, sharing them around and whatnot, and, you know, making snarky comments, um, and that's obviously what these outlets want. I anticipate we'll have a lot more of this in the months and years to come, but on the McWilliams interview in particular, which I do think has substance to it, um, let me know what you think, and if you think that it is a good idea for them to be sticking to the same or similar formula that they have done for the previous few Bonds, at least. Or do you kind of wish they'd mix it up a bit and indeed go for a big name actor or a much younger actor in the part? Personally, I'm kind of good with them continuing on as they have done before. It's a proven track record for success and to be perfectly honest, after the sort of the, you know, wider ranging narrative arc of the Craig era, I'm kind of fine with them just casting a 30-something bond and just carrying on. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments section below and also below you can find links to my various social media pages and you can also click the subscribe button and the Mrs. Bell notification button to stay up to date on future video uploads. And with all that being said and until next time Bond fans, so long for now.